All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today for our first official post-game presser. Um, as always, please use the raise hand function if you have a question, and please limit it to one question per person at a time. We'll start off with Jonathan. Hi, Coach. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Jonathan Kamingo was a standout performer for the young guys. Even at times, Jonathan looked like a man amongst boys. How, how impressed were you with his performance today? Um, I wasn't impressed because I see it every day in practice. Um, you know, and I've been with him since uh, August 28th, I think, when we got started. So it's what I expect. It's what I see every day. Uh, we've talked about it before, you know, the physicality that he plays with. Uh, being able to play, you know, at three levels from the three-point line, posting up, taking the ball strong to the basket, finishing through contact, um, and then the effort that he gives on defense. And, you know, it was evidenced by that last play of the game when uh, I think it was Jordan Poole or somebody drove to the basket and and he went up and uh, got a, a nice timely block uh, at, the, at the end of the game. So he does a lot of things for us. He's a very talented player. Um, and... Um, you just you you guys are just seeing the beginning of what he can do. Thank you so much, Coach. Question from Jordan. Hey, Coach. Um, can you just talk a little bit about you know Jerry Jack tonight? You know, twenty three points, nine for ten from the field, three for three. You know, just you know him being in the league and the experience he brings, but also you know what he helps for a guy like Knicks. You know, Knicks came in the game immediately, made an impact. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's the beauty of, uh, of our program, um, you know, having these young guys and having these hand-selected veterans uh, to, you know, be at their side. And, you know, as, as, as good as his stats were, um, the biggest part of what he did for us today was his communication skills out there on the floor. And with young guys, um, you know, a lot of times they get caught up kind of, you know, going 100 miles an hour, trying to do things too fast. Um, but he's always that settling influence for us uh, when things kind of get out of whack. And, um, you know, that's why I put him in to, to finish the game uh, for us. You know, like I said, we obviously want to try to win every game that we step on the floor. But for us, it's not really about winning and losing. It's about giving these young guys that experience that they need. Um, and, you know, and so they got that. And a couple of our young guys had a rougher outing tonight. Um, but, you know, they'll bounce back. But, you know, getting back to Jared, um, you know, he's been great since he's been with, been here with us. You know, obviously he has a track record. He's proven he's he, the same thing that he's done that he did tonight. He's done uh, in his career in the NBA. And so I'm just happy to have him with our young guys. You know, like I said, being a steady in force for them, both on the offensive side and the defensive side of the ball. We'll go to Cody with the next question. Um, Dacian, we we know has been been known to be a playmaker throughout his point his journey to this point. What how do you think he he played in that role running the offense, and what were some of your uh, initial impressions from him uh, today? Yeah, I thought he was great. You know, when he came in, he came in with that second unit with Jared Jack. Um, you know, I'm still as a coach trying to find the best combinations. Uh, you know, to have the guys out there on the floor. But, you know, once he checked in the game, the defensive intensity uh, immediately picked up. We were able to get some turnovers, get some clean defensive rebounds and get out in transition. And then you saw him and, you know, the, the uh, aggressiveness that he played with once he got in the game, taking the ball strong to the basket. When the defense collapsed on him, he, he made the right plays, uh, found our shooters in the corners. And, um, you know, and, and that's what he can do. Um, that's what he brings to the table. And so, um, you know, pairing him with Jared, I do that intentionally um, so that Jared can talk him through situations when they're out there on the floor. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and then they can kind of play off of one another. You know, we, we start in action with one of them on the other side of the court. And there's nothing there. And we swing it to the other side. We got another point guard that can that can make a play on the other side. And so um, Dacian just makes winning plays. You know, at the end of the day, you may look at the stat sheet and, it may look regular, but uh, but what he does out there on the floor, I recognize it. Um, it's a lot of the intangible things, and he's just going to get better and better. Question for Dakota. 
Hey, Coach. Um, despite the win, I noticed that the uh, young prospects had their struggles with closing out and moving over and under screens. Is that something? Is that going to be one of the areas that uh, you're going to be trying to have these uh, young players approve approve upon over the course of the next few weeks? Definitely. I mean, you know, we we you know, in their defense, we haven't had a ton of time to really have a lot of five on five uh, action scrimmages, uh, you know, in, in practice against one another, because we rarely had 10 players, uh, you know, available for us to have a full practice. But, um, you know, I definitely expect for us to get better in that area. And, you know, I expected it to be a struggle at times. We got caught early in the game, kind of ball watching. Um, and then by the time we turned around and identified where our man was, they were, you know, penetrating our defense, causing us to have to react instead of initiating the off uh, initiating the action ourselves. Um, but you know, we'll look at film and continue to teach, um, and they'll they'll have to learn through experience of you know how to negotiate through those types of situations. And you know, we're gonna take our lumps along the way, but as long as we learn from you know the mistakes we make and uh, we get better at it. And I thought tonight. We started out not so good on the defensive end, and then as the game, you know, got going, um, and we got used to the physicality and the speed of play, um, you know, our guys, uh, you know, picked it up. And you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, these guys are, you know, just out of high school. The guys that they were playing against are guys that were, you know, three of them, uh, or you know, two of them are, you know, guys that were on the Warriors team at the beginning of the season. They came down uh, to play in um, Manning. I'm Mannion and uh, and Jordan Poole. So, you know, they're, they're, they're not any slouches out there that they're playing against. Um, you know, those guys have a little bit more experience, but our guys are going to learn, you know, through, get their experience through having that time out there on the floor. We'll go to Brian with the next question. Yeah, hey, Coach, can you talk about the pressure that on you and the players, being that this is a, the pathway program, the sort of first uh, of its kind for you guys? What's that like? Um, there's no pressure at all. I mean, you know, really when it comes down to it, like basketball is a game. We preach, we have a loose environment around here. Um, we try to play with joy and have fun when we're out there on the court, but with the understanding that, you know, this is our job and this is also our lifestyle. Um, you know, this, that they chose, uh, they chose this path. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, the other guys took, other other routes right some guys went to college some guys went overseas to play our guys chose to come through this and i think that they're playing against the best competition if you compare it to the other routes that the, the other uh options that the other guys took and so um you know just I, i'm trying to keep them loose and get them uh, you know and make them understand that uh you know this is all a process and They've had fun and competed playing this game, and it's no different at this level. Um, you know, we're going to have our ups and downs. We don't want to get too high. We don't want to get too low. Um, but like I said, just continue to learn. Um, and, you know, for me, you know, like I said, there's no pressure at all. I, I enjoy the teaching aspect of it, the development part of it. Um, and so, you know, we're just going to tackle it head on and uh, cross whatever bridge we have to cross when we get to it. Got time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Jason next. Hey, Brian, uh, you mentioned it briefly a couple of responses ago, but overall, what were your impressions of the young guy? You, you hear young players often say like their first NBA game, they, they have nerves, even though they know they should be there. Uh, your young guys that go up against, you know, Nico, Jeremy Lin, who has a lot of NBA experience and obviously Jordan Poole, who's played a full season. I, had had a good game his last game with the Warriors this year. Did you notice any nerves? How do you think they did in their their first time on a nationally televised game against NBA talent? Yeah, I think you know naturally they had they had some butterflies, uh, you know, when the game started, and I think we saw that by how we were reactionary, uh, you know, in that first quarter when the game started. But uh, I, I thought that, like as as I said, as the game went on, I thought that we uh, figured it out. And then we started to catch up to the speed of the game. We started to catch up to the phys physicality. We started to hone in a little bit more on the personnel. Um, you know, at this level, especially playing a team like the like the Santa Cruz Warriors, they mimic the actions of their parent team, the Golden State Warriors, where there's a lot of ball movement and cutting. 
Um, they played five out. I don't know if they made an entry pass to the post at all to a big, um, you know, in, in, in terms of playing traditional basketball. And so, um, like I said, there were there were uh, there was definitely butterflies at the beginning of the game. But, you know, these guys have felt the energy around this team since we got here with the cameras that are falling around, with the attention that they've gotten. Uh, from being, you know, this unique team that's in, you know, 17 other G League teams, and we're not really a G League team, you know, we're this this pathway program team, and so uh, it's different, and they recognize that, but they've had targets on their back, and they've been, you know, had they've had guys coming for them based on their rankings up to this point, so it's just something that they're gonna have to play through and uh, be ready for. Question from Chris. Hi, Coach. What did you think of uh, Jalen Green's game in particular today? Jalen, Jalen, uh, I thought he pressed a little bit. You know, he was trying too hard. Um, you know, which is which is natural. And and I, I tell you this: all the teams, just from being being here the last nine nine or ten days, and having conversations with players on other teams as well as coaches from other teams, everybody is gunning for him because of the attention that he's he's gotten. And so, like I said, I just want him to have fun and and uh, you know, play the game and he's competitive and he'll figure it out. And I fully expect for him to uh, bounce back from today's game and, and, uh, and, and, and have a better game, uh, have a better game the next game. Uh, but he struggled, you know, he struggled a little bit today, just kind of over, over penetrating. Uh, not, we talked, you know, within our team about there's a rhythm to the offense and taking what the defense gives you. And I thought he had opportunities to, to take easier shots today, um, but he was trying to get something better than what the defense was giving him. And he was getting himself in, uh, in, in, in tough situations, you know, offensively. And then defensively, he was caught kind of ball watching a little bit, uh, you know, early on the game. But we'll watch film and, um, and, and he'll see. Uh, you know, those situations that he was in, and he'll get better at it. And, you know, like we talked about with Kaminga earlier, um, you know, nothing is really going to surprise me. There's going to be times when all these young guys are going to struggle, and there's going to be times when they uh, play extremely well. I, and I, I, I've seen it, you know, up to this point. So, like I said, I fully expect for him to play a lot better than what he did today. We'll go to Amit for the final question. Hey, Coach, uh, I noticed that uh, Prince Paul from India didn't play a lot, uh, uh, play at all today. Uh, I was just wondering whether there was an uh, injury issue or whether he's just not ready uh, yet, or was it like a tactical decision? Oh, it was it was completely my call. Um, I didn't feel like today, in today's game, uh, it was there was a situation that I could really get him in the game. Um, neither him nor uh, Jesse Govan. Uh, played for us today, um, you know, and in 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 uh, that's that's a coach's decision. You know, I have a rotation. When there's opportunities for me to get him in the game, I will. But I thought the way with Golden State kind of being uh, basically having one big and four small guys that were all perimeter players, uh, it was going to be a tough matchup for him today. And so he just didn't get an opportunity to get in today. Good. Thank you. All right, everybody, we've got Jonathan Kaminga here. It looks like everybody's got their hand raised. Again, please limit it to one question per person. We will start with Jason. Jonathan, how's it going, bro? Um, yeah, you had a good game today, man. Scored from all three levels. Uh, it had some playmaking, obviously, with four assists. Uh, is that what you're trying to show scouts you're capable of, just your all-around game and you're more than just – uh, a great athlete uh for sure that's what i was trying to do and just one thing i just got i think i just got to add on just be consistent on my defense there are some plays i was letting go and all everybody on the team trust on me on playing defense but there's some game i was just being time i was being lazy but that's the little stuff that i got covered question from brian next Hey Jonathan, uh, I just want to know what does this mean? What does this mean for you personally? And uh, and you have your family watching back home. Like, what, what does it feel like to have your first win? Uh, I mean, it feels great, especially hiding with the team. It feels great. Like this, is why everybody wanted all of us, the young guys on the team, 
uh, first game as professional. Really excited and happy to just win this game, man. I know for sure back home, the family who's watching the game, I know they're proud of me. Question from Cody. Hey, Jonathan. Uh, going up against a couple of guys from, from the Warriors and Jeremy Lin, of course, with guys with NBA experience, how did you feel like you, you played to that to that competition of, of those guys? Uh, I feel like I played good, but I didn't play it to my base. I didn't give it all that I, I have in me, but just come there and win a game with my teammates, that just felt great. Go to Jonathan with the next question. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. You were easily the standout performer amongst the young guys today. Like your poise and your assists were just were fantastic today. Is that something that you really wanted to showcase? Because obviously you're a great defender and you're a great athlete. So is that something you really wanted to show off today? Uh, I really wanted just to come out here and just show up everything that I got and just be patient with the game, let the game come to me. And that's what that's the thing I was trying to really work on and just execute all the plays that coach tell me to do. Thanks so much for your time and great game. Question from Tom. Jonathan, great game today. How much did the veterans help you, the veteran point guards and Jared, Jack and Bobby Brown really help you guys out there? Uh, I'll go with Jay Jack first, I think. Uh, on the beginning of the game, I was really, I wasn't patient with my game. And so for him to just come out to me, because he watched me, how I was playing, and he told me to just be patient and just slow my game down. And that's how I figured out everything. And on the defensive side, I had a Mary back there talking to me every time, and he helped me a couple of plays. Question from Dakota. Hey, Jonathan. Um, one of the things I noticed and I think a lot of people noticed about you tonight is your work as a playmaker when it came to making good passes, whether it's in the pinch post, running in transition. Uh, moving forward over the you know rest of the season, is that uh, one of the biggest skills that you want to show um, NBA teams? That's pretty much what I want to show and just come and execute and just I would like every time I'm not going to be on the ball and just stay away from the ball and just be ready to attack whenever I get the ball and just be patient with my game. Any other questions for Jonathan? All right, thanks everybody. Or how did you feel about your game so far today? Um, I felt great. You know, I, I know it's crazy to hit us, but uh, physically, man, this is the best I've ever felt as a professional. You know, no, even after two gruesome knee injuries, uh, uh, ankle surgery and all that stuff, man, I feel very, very much springy, very much myself, um, able to get up and down the court. Um, I must say this is the very first game I've ever played probably where I didn't have an assist, which I'm still having a tough time trying to process. But all in all, I'm glad we got the W. You yeah, shoot like that, you don't need assists. Thanks for your time. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Go to Brian next. Hey, Jared. Can you talk about the the play of your young teammate today? And what, what did you tell him coming into the game? And how do you think they performed? Um. Well, all of them, honestly. Um. I know for you know a few of them, this is their first time playing on on national TV, playing in front of a huge audience. Even though we didn't have one particularly in person, just allowing the game organically to come to you. You know, not forcing it. Um. And just and just really just you know like I said before just letting the game come to you that that's the big thing young, a lot of the time a lot of young guys they like to press and everybody wants to play great I totally understand that but if you're aggressive you assess the situation if it's not there for you make a play for somebody else being selfless and not selfish I think that's kind of kind of my thing and uh, everything you want out of this whole this whole thing right here man it'll come to fruition. Question from Dakota. Hey, Jerry, um, kind of going off with uh, Jonathan said, but as somebody that watched you play with Sioux Falls during the 2019 and 20 season where you were solid, but you didn't look as, I guess, lively mm -hmm. as you did uh, today. What did you uh, do during the extended off season that, that led to the great performance that you had uh, against Santa Cruz? Man, I, I got my butt in the gym as best as I could. 
uh, that kind of the COVID kind of slowed down that process. But fortunately, I was able to, uh, you know, have some tools at the house that I can still maintain my regimen. And I uh, went to this place called Adapt uh, Athletics and, you know, they, they got me in, in prime condition. So I was able to kind of hit the ground running and be ready at a moment's notice when I got the phone call to come out here and, you know, glad I was able to, you know, put on a pretty solid performance. Question from Jason. Hey, Jared, what's going on, man? Not too uh, much. Do, you, do you feel still feel like you can contribute to an NBA team? And is that your goal for coming out here to try to get back uh, to the league and, you know, help a team at that level as well? No, I, I, I definitely believe that I do. I mean, like I said, this is the best I've ever felt physically, which I think is translating into my play. You know, getting up higher on my jump shot, uh, knocking down shots at a high clip, and uh, just being able to be aggressive. You know, um, I thought out there, man, I, I felt very, very, very lively. And, uh, yeah, that, that's my whole reason for being down here, helping these young guys and then also coming out to potentially represent myself. And hopefully uh, I can make a situation where I, I catch, a, catch somebody or a team's eye and we'll see what happens after that. Appreciate you, bro. No problem. Question from Tom. Garrett, two big shots at the end of the game. Was anything drawn up for you, or you instincts just took over? Uh, one was a, pretty much an isolation. Uh, if I had something, kind of looked to be aggressive. But if I didn't, I, it was going to turn into a dribble weave situation. But thought I had a pretty good look and, and was able to knock it down. And then the last play with the pick and roll, um, I thought we were kind of playing a little haywire, um, not playing deep enough into the clock. Um, trying to minimize the amount of possessions left in the game. So I looked at my other vet, veteran compadre, Amir, and, you know, we said we're going to take this thing down to about seven, eight seconds. And uh, luckily I was able to knock down the shot, put them in a, in a difficult situation where we put, made it a two-possession ball game and, you know, was able to walk out of there with the win. Question from Jordan. Hey, Jared. Jared. Um... Coach talked a little bit about how he wanted Knicks to be in the in the lineup with you and how you've helped him and you know just just with your leadership and your ability, you know, just all your experience. Can you just talk a little bit about that? And then also just, you know, looking at your body, you talk about how you've been lively. You know, you look very lean. Did you change your diet too as well? Like has that been a thing that you've been implementing too? Man, it's it's crazy that you mentioned that. First, let me talk about Dacian. Um very, very smart kid. You know, the way he sees plays, especially at 18 years old, um, is something I haven't seen in a, in a lot of young players. He has the size, the build, to be able to see over the defense in certain instances. But, yeah, just, just encouraging him to be aggressive. You know, when I came in, he kind of uh, deferred to me to be the point guard. And I was like, look, man, we can kind of do this by committee. You know, uh, I know what you're here for to establish yourself and kind of, you know, move up uh, on, on this radar as far as this thing is concerned. And I thought he did a hell of a job controlling the game today. Um, but as far into your second question, yeah, you know, um, switched up my diet, switched up some of my eating habits, some of my other habits as well. And it's paying dividends. You know, um, I try not to stop learning, just just period, basketball or, you know, other stuff going with it. And I've learned about the nutrition value of things and trying to really attack it. I wanted to – I looked at this summer and I said, man, I want to see how really good I could be from all angles, from – working countlessly and tirelessly in the gym, but then also when I'm away from it, doing the other things that's going to contribute to my game growing as well. So eating right, getting rest, and, uh, you know, doing everything to try to have a positive effect on my body. For Cody with the next question. Hey, Jared, appreciate your time uh, today. Uh, Coach told us a little while ago that, you know, from his conversations that there's going to be some some players that are really going to go after the young guys, Jalen, Jonathan, all these guys. And, you know, as one of the leaders on the team, what's kind of be kind of your message to those guys on how to handle those situations as a player yourself who has, you know, gone through that before? I was, it was, it's funny you mentioned that. I was just talking to Jalen. I said, man, the very first play they went at you, huh? He said, man, unbelievable. He cut right across my face. I was, I was a little surprised. I said, look, man, I'm going to tell you the one thing that, in this league, what people would do all the time. If they're looking around for someone, let's go at the rookie. Let's see if the rookie's ready to play, ready for this matchup. And 
you know, those are the things that they're going to really have to understand, especially in these scenarios. A lot of these guys feel like the jobs that they want, the jobs that they're fighting for, wow. these kids are, are kind of get, given those opportunities and they want to come out here as best they can and compete and uh, alongside you guys. And they're trying to showcase themselves as much as people coming to watch you. They think there's people are coming to watch them as well. So, you know, being ready to compete, being prepared and understanding uh, the opportunity at hand. One final question from Christos. Hello, congratulations on the win. Thank you. How do you believe this win and the way that you want to give an example about the, the continue of the season? And what is the potential of this team? Uh, the potential of this team, man, I, every day I, I think we're growing. You know, um, we have some very, very young guys. And I remember what it was like to be 18, you know, uh, hitting the learning curve at the pace that I was. And, it wasn't the professional rank, so this is a, a lot more uh, stuff they really have to digest. And I think that's where people like myself come into play, Bobby, Amir, but we can kind of help them and talk to them and guide them and know that, you know, they're learning, but just slow down, you know, so you won't have to be overwhelmed and you can kind of process the information that's being thrown at you and then you can apply it in game situations. So as long as we keep growing, working hard, and everybody's uh, open to learn and, and be patient. That's the other thing. You have to have a certain level of patience, but you also have to go out there and execute because nobody wants to be telling somebody something seven, eight, nine times. You know what I mean? So I think uh, we have a pretty good ceiling as far as this thing is concerned, but they have to know these games come in bunches and we have to be prepared to take people's best shot. All right, thanks everybody. This recording will be available on Media Central and the Content Network shortly. Thank you all for having me, man. Appreciate it.